Continuing with our One Little Idea series, Guy Kawasaki is an American venture capitalist and internet marketing guru. He's the author of about 13 books. He has had the privilege of having seen hundreds of business plans and startup presentations. His books, website and social media content contain a lot of advice, but I'm just going to focus on just one piece. That single piece of advice is not about something that you should do, rather something that you shouldn't do. When you're writing a business plan for anything, either a startup or an existing venture, the one thing not to write on paper or to say in your presentations is along these lines. The market size is X. If we just get Y percent of that market, then... There's a few reasons for this, but probably the most important one is very well explained by Daniel Priestley. Daniel Priestley is the author of these three books, and one of the key points that he uses is the idea of income distribution. He points out that it's a winner-takes-all world. The way in which it is shown is that in every industry there are a few big winners, both in terms of individuals and companies. On the y-axis, we can plot income. On the X, we have the individuals who receive that income. We could also plot market share on the Y and the organizations or companies with that market share on the X. Daniel Priestley splits the graph into three and describes these winners as key people of influence. In wider terms, they could also be key organizations. Those further out he describes as worker bees. These are individuals or companies that are able to make a living in the industry but are not at the top by any means. Beyond that are those which he terms the newbies. Those that maybe have only just joined the industry and are probably not managing to cover all their bills. Priestley believes that the number of the super successful is usually about 10% or less in this super winner category. We're all familiar with the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. In this case, it seems to be 90-10, but that could be due to the fact that those at the edge are pretty loosely affiliated. They aren't that committed and maybe can't be legitimately included. To look for a firm number here would be to split hairs and not a productive use of time. In many ways, when looking at this graph and thinking about pure income, what we are looking at is similar to the findings of Thomas Piketty, the French economist and author of Capital in the 21st Century. He'd be looking at the changing shape of this graph over time, but that's an aside for a different discussion in another forum. But anyway, think about whatever industry you work in. Would you recognize this graph? Now, think about a venture capitalist like Guy Kawasaki listening to your pitch when you're looking for funding for your venture. You say that the market size is X and you believe that you can capture a market share of Y for a start, the total market size is the area under the graph. And it's certainly not clear where you'd be starting to measure that Y percent from. And even if your Y percent is a big number, you'd be so much better off to be redefining your product and industry and coming up with a blue ocean. Think of a real life example that many people can relate to. Try mobile phones. I understand that the top five in terms of market share for the most recent quarter are Samsung, Apple, Huawei, Oppo and Xiaomi. Having said that, I've just seen recent numbers from Xiaomi which looked pretty bad. I'm not sure if they're re retaining that position. Samsung had 23% market share. Samsung and Apple combined have 38% market share. The top three have 46% market share between them and the top five have 55%. This leaves the other players to fight over the other 44%. Consider what life would be like for the world's 10th biggest mobile phone maker, which I understand is the Indian company Micromax with something like a 1.8% share. Now, consider again the funding provider presented with the concept that you want to introduce a product that you think will capture X percent of a market. It's not a good idea. You must define the product or service offering much better than that. 
You must always be thinking of becoming the best at what you do and never dream of creating something that will be out in the outer areas. I'm sure that Micromax never spend any time thinking about their global position. They're thinking about their specific niche and marketing to the various cultures within the world's second biggest market. And in the niche they have defined, I'm sure they are very close to the top. This is just one example where someone would have real trouble in pitching. If we can just get 1.8% of this market, the key is to avoid it and to define your market much more clearly. In our next scribe, we talk about drilling down into the product life cycle and getting to what your real niche is. Ideally, it has to be a blue ocean in some form, unless you are planning uh, an industry consolidation or roll up. If you don't have that blue ocean clarity, then you must go back and look for whatever it is you want to offer. In our next scribe, we are looking at exactly that, the concept of the product life cycle. We're only starting.